Here's what I would do if I was to learn Python again from scratch for data science. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name's Leon. So I've been using Python since around 2016 and I didn't really take it seriously until about 2018. And since then I've been focused more on the fundamentals of Python and I've been more involved with libraries like Pandas, Scikit-Learn and Keras, etc. And there's definitely things that I wish I learned earlier now that I've been using Python for a couple of years. You know, if I focused on certain things, I think I'd be much better at Python nowadays. So up here are the timestamps in case you want to skip ahead. And in this video, I'm going to go over what I would do if I was to learn Python again completely from scratch for data science. Let's get right into it. So Python is an object oriented programming language. And that was something that I pretty much ignored entirely for the first few years of using Python during my undergraduate math degree. Obviously, if you have come from a computer science background, this is probably something that you're already familiar with. However, for me, I didn't really know what it was and it took me a while to really get to grips of the concepts of classes and objects, etc. And so having a good understanding of object oriented programming means that you can modularize your code. This makes it much friendlier to changes and tests over time and also means you can scale your code much easier. Now, when you're just starting off, it might not seem that important, but I do think later on, if you're, uh, if you're working with a team of multiple people that have a bit more experience with Python and you want to be taken more seriously, I think it is inevitable that you have to have a good understanding of how classes and objects work, etc. It just makes things more efficient and scalable. So the next thing I would get comfortable with is Jupyter. So I didn't really start using Jupyter until around 2018 as well. Uh, and before that, I would always write my code in these long scripts. When I figured out how to use Jupyter properly, so when I got comfortable with writing code in Jupyter, uh, it changed the game completely for exploratory analysis because it meant that I can just run little blocks of code and I didn't need to worry about writing a perfect script of code in order to do a little piece of analysis. And it also meant that I can kind of play around with the uh, data in a non-linear fashion and then later on I can connect the dots into a uh, single story. Overall, I think Jupyter is very intuitive to use and I wish I used it more earlier in my career, especially when I first started learning Python. Nowadays, I use Jupyter to just explore the data and play around with the functions that I want to create. And then I would write that uh, officially in a script later. And I think that's what most data scientists do. So if you plan on working as a data scientist, I think uh, you definitely need to get comfortable with Jupyter as early as possible. I'll also put in the cards above a link to a video where I go through how to install Python for data science, which includes libraries like Jupyter. So if you're interested, you can check that out as well. So in my experience, doing projects is the best way to learn data science. I think we've all been there before where we spent absolutely ages going through tutorials and guides without actually applying the knowledge to solve real problems. I personally find that if I just spend time reading about stuff without actually applying it, then it's very easy for me to forget what I've just learned. And this is especially true when it comes to programming. I used to be quite hesitant about starting a project that involved a lot of programming. But I think if I could go back in time, I would just go for it and do projects that I was interested in, even if they were difficult when it comes to the programming aspect and just accept the fact that things are not going to work out as intended and uh, things are just going to break. I think that's just a part of the learning experience. As an example, last year I worked on a computer vision project and at the time I knew absolutely nothing about computer vision. I also knew that the programming aspect of it was going to be really difficult, but I went for it anyway because I've always been interested in computer vision and uh, it paid off really well. Like I wouldn't have learned so much if I just read about computer vision uh, from like guides and textbooks or whatever. I think it's just easier to go for it and then learn along the way. So I think it's just a mindset shift and you just have to accept the fact that you're never going to feel ready. So version controlling is something that I wish I learned much earlier on in my career because data science is messy. You know, usually in data science projects, there's always bits and pieces of code. And if you leave them for a long time and then come back to them later, it's very easy to break something. You know, if you don't have a proper version controlling system in place, then if you make some changes and you forget about it, then you could break the entire project. You know, I've had experience of that before and it's an absolute nightmare trying to figure out which part it is that's actually broken. I used to use GitHub just to store my projects without actually using Git, the language. But then once I started learning how to use Git, it actually wasn't that difficult. I wish I learned how to use it much earlier. I think it would have been really useful for some of my uh, university projects that involved a lot of code. It just would have been nice to have it all on there and then uh, 
uh, it would have made it much easier for me to show off my work as well because you can see the entire history of my projects. So error handling and unit testing are both quite important if you want to write reliable code and it's still something that I struggle with to this day. So I wish I learned more of it when I first started learning Python. Error handling means your code knows what to do if it comes across an error. That error could be some kind of broken connection to an API or it might be uh, an unsupported data format. It could be anything really but if I learn how to handle errors better earlier on then I'd be able to automate my code much easier instead of just trying to run it and then hoping that nothing breaks, which usually something will break. And then there's also unit testing, which makes sure that each part of your code is running as intended before you actually run everything together. Even if you can handle errors properly, that doesn't really matter if your code isn't even behaving properly to begin with. For example, there might be a new update in a module that you use, and that might change the way a function behaves completely, and that can impact your results significantly. So unit testing is just a good habit to have in general. I've also seen some job descriptions require you to be comfortable with unit testing, so I wish I learned this earlier in my career because it would have been extremely useful even just for applying for jobs. So coding challenges are often used by companies to test your programming knowledge. Now, whether or not this is actually a good measure of your programming skills is debatable in my opinion, but nevertheless, I wish I started doing these coding challenges since the beginning. These coding challenges will help keep your programming skills sharp and it'll help build confidence as well if you apply for companies that ask for coding challenges as part of their interview process. Recently, I've been using HackerRank to improve my Python and SQL skills because when I apply to uh, some of these companies, they keep asking for HackerRank challenges. So uh, that's why I've been using it. But there's plenty of other websites that do the same thing. In my opinion, if you can get good at doing these challenges, you can pretty much pass the first stage of the technical interviews. Just for that alone, I think is good enough reason to uh, to start learning these as soon as you can. So that's basically what I'd do if I was to start over again and learn Python for data science. I've also got a video up here somewhere that you can check out where I go through how to install Python for data science on a Windows machine. Currently, it's I think it's my fifth year of using Python. You know, I'm still constantly revisiting the basics, so don't be intimidated if this list seems a bit intense. Uh, if you wanna see more content like this, please like and subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one.